Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Dentistified or if you people are new here then welcome to my YouTube channel Dentistified. Through this channel, I share my knowledge and give a quick review on various dental topics in a simplified form. So don't forget to subscribe and I hope you all are doing fine, you all are safe. Okay, so today's topic is about removable partial dentures, basically an introduction about the major connectors. So as we already know that the success of a removable partial denture mainly depends on proper design and component selection, which is possible only if we have a good understanding about all the components of removable partial denture. In my previous video, I have already given you a brief overview about the removable partial denture components. So the removable partial denture consists of following six main components. Each of these components has specific functions and requirements which are essential for the successful treatment of the partially edentulous patient. So the components are major connector, minor connector, direct retainer, indirect retainer as you can see in this diagram, denture base and prosthetic teeth. Link will be provided in the description box below for that video where I have talked in detail about all these components. But in today's video, we will talk about major connectors, their functions and requirements. So what is a major connector? A major connector is a part of the removable partial denture which connects the components present on one side of the arc to the components present on the opposite side of the arc. As the name itself tells, major connector. Hence, its first major function is to connect the connection it creates. So, next important function of major connector is unification. Unification of the major parts of the prosthesis. Now, since the major connector is that unit of prosthesis or it is that unit of partial denture to which all other parts are directly or indirectly attached, as you can see in this diagram, hence it is through major connector that the other components of partial denture become unified. Now, apart from these two functions, connection and unification, there are other functions of major connectors which include stress distribution that is the distribution of the applied forces throughout the arc to the selected teeth and tissue. So that means that major connector enables the transfer of functional forces of occlusion from the denture base to all the supporting teeth and tissues within an arc. So by unifying all the elements of a partial denture, the major connector can distribute the functional loads to all the abutment teeth. Why? So that no one abutment is subjected to extreme loading for optimum stability. This results in optimum stability and this optimum stability is achieved when a major connector is able to reduce the load to any one area while effectively controlling what prosthesis movement. So this explains that stress distribution is a major function of major connector. So the next important function of major connector is cross arc stabilization. By uniting the components present on one side of the arc with those which are present on the opposite side of the arc, the major connector it helps to resist the displacement by functional stresses. Now, this is the reason that uh, it provides cross arc stabilization which will further help in dissipating what the harmful forces the cross arc stabilization further helps in dissipating twisting and torquing forces which further results in minimization of torque to the teeth which is another important function of major connector i hope you all are clear with the functions of major connector i'll quickly summarize all the functions for you. First is connection, then unification, stress distribution, then is cross arc stabilization and finally minimization of torque to the teeth. 
So now we'll talk about the requirements of a major connector. First is rigidity. The first and the most important requirement of major connector is what? It is rigidity. Now why rigidity is so important? Rigidity is necessary to ensure that the partial denture functions as one unit. This means that the component parts do not function independently from one another. We don't want this. So what will happen if the major connector is flexible? If the major connector is flexible, it will result in concentration of forces to individual teeth and segments of residual ridge which will further result in traumatic damage to the periodontal support of the abutment teeth. And this will further result in tooth mobility or tooth loss. A flexible major connector is going to result in injury to the residual ridges, which may further result in the resorption of residual ridge and hence resulting in decreased ridge height. Now, if the ridge height is decreased, obviously it will result in decreased support for the associated denture base. So, result in impingement of the underlying tissues. So, now we understand that major connector should be rigid. If it is flexible, it will result in traumatic damage to the periodontal support of all the abutment teeth. It will result in injury to the residual ridges and it will result in impingement of the underlying tissues. Now this explains that major connectors should be rigid. Why? So that the forces which are applied to one part of uh, the removable partial denture, they are transmitted to other parts of the removable partial denture and they are transmitted and dissipated by all the teeth and tissues contacted by major connector. Therefore, the functions of broad stress distribution and cross arc stabilization can be achieved only if the major connectors are rigid. If the major connector is flexible, we will not be able to achieve these functions. Major connector can be made more rigid by using a more rigid alloy. Chrome cobalt has a better rigidity than the gold alloys and cast is better than rot. Now second is shape or the cross section. We can use half round or half pear shaped which are more rigid as compared to flat bars. Another important point by which we can increase the rigidity of major connector is that we can increase the bulk as the length increases. Also what we can do is we can corrugate the lingo plate or the rugae areas in order to increase the rigidity. Now the second major requirement of a major connector is that it should not interfere with the soft tissues. That means the major connector should not permit the impingement of free gingival margins of the remaining teeth. You know what? The marginal gingiva is highly vascular. Hence, it is susceptible to injury from sustained pressure. Therefore, it is very important that a definitive distance should be maintained between the border of the major connector and the free gingival margin. Maxillary arc, now because there is no moving tissue in the palate, right, as compared to the mandibular arc where there are moving tissues in the floor of the mouth, hence the borders of the maxillary major connector may be placed well away from the gingival tissues. Distance should be at least 6 mm for the maxillary major connector. Whereas in the mandibular arc, the limiting factor at the inferior border of the lingual bar connector is the height of the moving tissues in the floor of the mouth, right? Therefore, the superior border of the lingual bar connector should be located at a minimum distance of 3 to 4 millimeters below the gingival margins. Therefore, the distance that should be maintained between the border of a maxillary major connector and free gingival margin is at least 6 mm and the distance that should be maintained between the border of mandibular major connector and free gingival margin is at least 3 to 4 mm. The 
another important point to be kept in mind is that the border of major connector should run parallel to the gingival margins. As you can see in this diagram, also if the margins they have to be crossed, the crossing should be done abruptly and it should be done at right angles to the gingival margin. Now what is the reason for this abrupt crossing? This is done to produce least contact with the underlying tissues. In addition to this, a small amount of relief is used over the area where crossing occurs. Why? In order to minimize the impingement of the tissues. So the other areas of potential tissue impingement are Various heart structures such as mid-palatal suture or mandibular tori, appropriate relief between the metal and soft tissues should be provided so that the connector does not fulcrum on them during movement and to avoid inflammation of the underlying soft tissues. I hope it is clear that why relief is needed. Because we don't want any inflammation on the underlying tissues due to the major connector movement and we do not want major connectors to fulcrum on these hard structures during the functional movements. So I hope that now you understand that what four things are required to prevent the major connector from interfering with the underlying soft tissues. First is to maintain a definitive distance between the border of major connector and free gingival margin. Second is that the border should run parallel to the gingival margins and the margins should be crossed abruptly and at right angles. In addition, a small amount of relief should be provided in order to minimize the impingement of the underlying soft tissues. So another important requirement of major connector is that the major connector should maintain patient comfort, speech or phonetics. Now the edges of the major connector should be rounded and tapered towards the tissues. Why rounded? so that the border outlines they are inconspicuous to the tongue as you can see in the diagram and why tapered so that we want uh, the borders to be tapered towards the tissue so that there is a smooth transition from the connector to the tissues reason the anterior border of uh, maxillary major connector should end in the valley between the rugae crests and not on the crest as you can see in this diagram another thing is that the bulk should be reduced enough so that it does not interfere with the speech or appearance yet it should be thin enough to ensure the rigidity of a major connector we don't want to compromise rigidity of the major connector right also, we should avoid terminating the borders of major connector on heart tissues like mid-palatal suture or mandibular tori and we should avoid terminating the borders on soft tissues like lingual frenum and the movable soft palate. Connectors should also prevent food impaction. Food impaction can be minimized by properly locating the margins at the prescribed distance from the free gingival margin which we have already discussed today and by eliminating the large concavities where food can collect. In addition to this, the major connector must allow appropriate placement of the associated denture base. Generally, the type of major connector is dictated by the number and location of edentulous areas. We will discuss this in detail in further lectures. So, a major connector contributes to the support of the prosthesis, right? And the last and the most important requirement of a major connector is that the intimate contact between the palatal soft tissues and the metal of major connector enhances the retention and stability of the denture. Just summarize what are all the requirements of a major connector. First and the most important requirement of a major connector is rigidity. Then is it should not interfere with the soft tissues, right? Then is that it should maintain patient comfort, 
speech or phonetics. Then it should prevent food impaction. It should allow appropriate placement of the associated denture base, right? And other important requirement of major connector is that it should contribute to support, retention and stability of the denture. I really hope that you understand the difference between retention, stability and support. I've already explained it in detail in one of my previous videos and a link for that video will be provided in the description box below. Okay? Do watch that video before continuing with my next video because you really need to have a clear understanding about uh, the concept of stability, retention and support in order to understand my further videos. In my next video, I'll talk about the various types of uh, maxillary major connectors. So yeah, stay tuned for that. This video and you find it helpful, then don't forget to subscribe and also press the ringing bell which is next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my new videos and you get notified whenever I post a new one. Do share it with your friends and colleagues and hit that like button if you want me to make more such videos. So yeah, stay positive, stay safe and I'll see you very soon in my next video.